If you're struggling with sleep as you age, your gut may be the reason why. Your gut bacteria helps produce serotonin and melatonin, the same hormones that tell your body when to relax and when to sleep. But here's the problem. If your gut health is off, these sleep signals don't work properly. The result? Trouble falling asleep, restless nights, and waking up groggy. But here's the good news. By supporting your gut, you can train your body to sleep deeper and have less awakenings throughout the night. In this video, we're gonna be turning complex gut science into simple, actionable sleep tips that you can start using tonight. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor. So what is gut health exactly? Well, it's the overall state of your digestive tract. With digestion and absorption, your gut is breaking down the absorbable pieces of food and moving it along in a steady pace. Too slow is constipation and too fast is diarrhea. When it's working, nutrients pass through, but pathogens and toxins don't. And then there's what's called your microbiome. The microbiome is essentially trillions of microbes that help digest components of food, interact with the immune system, and produce metabolites. Now, how exactly does your gut health affect sleep? Number one, your gut and your brain are linked through what's called the gut-brain axis, which involves nervous system signaling, immune system signaling, and metabolites from gut microbes. What does that mean exactly? Well, if your gut bacteria are healthy, those signals help regulate calmness and sleep hormones. But if your gut is inflamed or out of balance, those same signals can keep your brain wired and restless at night. Number two, the gut microbiome influences sleep through the production of neuroactive compounds. Serotonin, 90% of it is produced in your gut, and it's a precursor to melatonin, which as we all know, is a powerful sleep hormone. GABA, also produced here, is a calming neurotransmitter that helps the brain wind down. Unfortunately, as we get older, both natural melatonin production and gut bacterial support for these hormones have a tendency to decline. Before I go on to the next one, if you're on Medicare, there's a good chance that you might be on the wrong plan and not even know it. I was talking to one of my older patients the other day and he told me he switched his Medicare plan last year and he already saved over a thousand bucks and he did it using a free service called Chapter. And when I looked into it myself, I honestly wish I had known about it sooner. Chapter advisors will make sure your doctors are covered. They'll explore every plan available in your area. They even check to see if you qualify for extra benefits and they can compare all of your options in about 20 minutes. So if you want real unbiased help with Medicare, give Chapter a call at 912-809-3127. You'll actually talk to a real person who will help you figure out exactly which plan is right for you for free. Number three, poor gut health can increase intestinal permeability or what we call leaky gut. This lets bacterial products like LPS trigger inflammation. Inflammation is strongly tied to insomnia, restless sleep, as well as fatigue. And you guessed it, older adults are more likely to experience this leaky gut. All right, this is all interesting, Dr. Bruce, but how can I tell if I have a healthy gut or not? Here are some signs of a healthy gut. Number one, regular pain-free bowel movements. Number two, consistent energy levels. Number three, normal amounts of gas and bloating. Number four, healthy bowel transit time. And then there's no adverse reactions to food. Difficulty digesting certain foods can be a sign of an unhealthy gut. I also wanna mention something called the Bristol stool chart. This is a medical tool doctors and patients use to describe the form and consistency of your poop, which they break down into seven different types. Types one and two lean more towards constipation. Constipation can cause bloating, abdominal discomfort, and even reflux all of which interfere with falling and staying asleep. This type is often linked with low fiber intake, dehydration, or disrupted circadian rhythms. Types five through seven are loose stools and diarrhea. Loose stools can result from stress, high sugar, high fat intake, or conditions like IBS, all of which may worsen with poor sleep. Types three through four are the ideal stools. They suggest healthy digestion, balanced gut microbiome, and stable intestinal transit time. These usually reflect a gut that is less likely to send alarm signals to the brain at night, helping with more restful sleep. Hey, really quick, if you wanna learn about more ways to get better sleep tonight, you need to subscribe to the channel right now. I've got a bunch of great content coming out soon that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. And if you're finding this video helpful, please give it a like. 
Your support allows me to create more content like this for you in the future. Hey, and while you're at it, swing on over to sleepdoctor.com. We have an incredible shop with tons of sleep products that will help you stay asleep the entire night. I'll leave a link below in the description. So what can you do to improve the health of your gut? Well, the good news is that the majority of you out there can take actionable steps if you do not already suffer from a pre-existing medical conditions or restrictions. Tip number one, build a plant-forward, fiber-rich diet. Whole vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains feed beneficial microbes and support the mucus barrier. These help your gut bacteria thrive, and in return, they help your brain regulate sleep better. Oh yeah, and you also have better poops. Usually means better nights of sleep as well. Be sure to include fermented foods here too if you enjoy them. A randomized trial from Stanford Medicine found that a fermented food diet, think things like yogurt, uh, kimchi, sauerkraut, or kombucha, increased gut microbiome diversity and reduced several inflammatory markers in healthy adults. Also, I would aim for between 25 and 38 grams of fiber per day, depending upon age and sex, and at least eight to 10 different fiber sources per week. Do yourself a favor and stay hydrated. This is especially important uh, with insoluble fiber to prevent constipation. A few other recommendations I would add here. Generally speaking, I would avoid supplements labeled probiotic. Supplemental probiotics are not recommended for most digestive conditions. Selected formulations may help a few situations, but routine use for things like IBS and IBD or general wellness just doesn't appear to be supported by the data. Talk to your doctor before using them, especially if you're immunocompromised. Also, be cautious of microbiome tests sold direct to consumer. Stool microbiome composition tests can map out which microbes are in your gut, but they're not diagnostic tools and should be interpreted cautiously. Results are very context dependent. Your microbiome changes with diet, sleep, stress, even time of day. So one test is kind of just a snapshot. If you try one, use it as a conversation starter with your doctor or dietitian, not as a prescription for what you should eat or which supplements you should take. Remember, your gut health and sleep are deeply interconnected. A healthy gut supports neurotransmitter production, balanced inflammation, and circadian alignment, all of which help you fall asleep easier and sleep more soundly, especially as we get older. And if you try any of these recommendations and they do not seem to be working for you, please share your sleep problems below. I wanna make sure that I'm creating content that directly addresses your issues. If you wanna learn about the best supplements for sleep as you age or how to fall back to sleep in the middle of the night, go check out these videos right here. All right, everyone, that's it for this one. I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.